This is Radio Boston. I'm Meghna Chakrabarty. Rap and hip-hop as art forms evoke images of urban life, impossibly complex and elegant rhymes, braggadocio, misogyny, and more. Kanye West, Jay-Z, Eminem, their style is part street brawl, part big business. So why, then, are we playing this song? You shake your shimmy and you shake it fast. You can't shake your shimmy, shake your yes, yes, yes. Now you the dirty mistreat. Rub and a cheater. Slip you in the dust. Your pappy is your cousin. Your mama do the Lord in all. That is a 1929 recording from Speckled Red, the great Louisiana blues man. And if you listen closely, his song, The Dirty Dozen, is exactly that. It's dirty, although we're playing a radio-safe version here. It's authentic. It's picking a fight while playing a catchy tune. And our guest says that it's that old American tradition, along with the equally misunderstood tradition of yo mama jokes, that gave birth to modern rap and hip-hop. Elijah Wald is a musician, writer, and former world music critic for the Boston Globe. He writes about rap's deep roots in a new book entitled The Dozens, A History of Rap's Mama. Elijah Wald, welcome to Radio Boston. Oh, thanks for having me on. So we're going to talk a little bit about Speckled Red and what we just heard there in a second. But um, that title, The Dirty Dozen, and this thing called The Dozens, what is it? <laughs> oh, boy. Um it's sort of hard to answer. It's a lot of different things. It's partly just the whole tradition of mother insulting, parent insulting, family insulting. It also was a tradition of verbal dueling, which didn't always include that. You know, two young guys, sometimes young women, would square off and just, you know, have a fight insulting each other rather than fighting physically. And how old is it uh, in worldwide or, or is particularly the American versions of, mm, of that's the, a, that dueling? That's a good question. There are versions worldwide that are very old, and it's all over Africa in various forms. African-American tradition, presumably it came over from Africa and goes as far back as you can go. The name the dozens seems to have come in sometime probably toward the end of the 19th century. The first absolute provable example of it is from about 1914. 1914. In your book, you have this wonderful uh, quotation from Zora Neale Hurston um, quite a bit later. This is a 1942 quotation, but she says, to play the dozens is a way of saying low... Low rate your enemy's ancestors and him down to the present moment for reference and then go into his future as far as your imagination leads you. But if you have no faith in your personal courage and confidence in your arsenal, don't try it. It's a risky pleasure. Zora Neale Hurston loved that whole Southern tradition of colorful language and insult verses and insults. And I mean, she got them into all sorts of different books. And she made the link that a lot of people have made since to Shakespearean English, which also had this huge repertoire of insults, though it didn't tend to get into mothers. The closest they ever got was horse son. <laughs> so why would, do you think it was so important, particularly for um, African-American tr- tradition and culture? Was it because, I mean, there was so much verbal wordplay or um, that, in a, in a way, it's inherently musical as well, even though they're throwing insults at each other? Well, I mean... Honestly, when I started getting into this, a lot of people said it was an African tradition, and I was really dubious because everything gets called an African tradition. But in fact, when I started looking around studies in Africa, it is universal in Africa, this idea of mother insulting and parent insulting, but specifically mothers, both in contexts of fighting. There's a whole tradition in West Africa of what's called combat verse where like before boxing matches or wrestling matches, they recite these insulting poems that get into people's moms. But also in context like circumcision ceremonies, where boys, the song they would sing after being circumcised included, um, to phrase it politely, copulate with your mother. <laughs> Just like we are on public radio here, so we will keep this family friendly. But I want so it's interesting. There's a, there's a complicated history that that crosses cultures and and religions here. But let's go back to that um, that first track that we opened uh, the segment with, sure. and that is Speckled Red, 1929, The Dirty Dozen. Let's hear a little bit more of that. Yonder go your mom going across the field. Running down and shaking like an automobile. I hollered at your mama and I told her to wait. She slipped away from me like a cat in that cage. Now she's a running mistreater, robber and a cheater. Pappy is a cousin, slippy in the dust. Your mama's doing it all, it all. 
So why is this particular song so important in this this arc that you're going to draw between the dozens as a as a form of game and what we're going to later hear is modern day hip hop and rap? Well, a couple of different ways. One thing is just that it was a huge, huge hit. I mean, my guess is that a lot of people who had been exchanging mother insults but never called them the dozens started using that word after they heard the Speckled Red song. Because, I mean, it was so big, it got covered by everybody. These are names that these days only blues fans remember. But Lonnie Johnson, Leroy Carr, Memphis Minnie, um, everyone did versions of this song back in the 30s. But the other thing about it, and the thing that in some ways most fascinates me, is that Speckled Red's record was completely a censored version of the song that he was already singing. I mean, that verse that we just heard... um, None of those lines went exactly that way. (laughs) Yonder go your mama across the field. This says run and shaken like an automobile. I'm not going to say what he said originally, but this was filthy. Every line of it was filthy, as filthy as anything in gangster rap. And the thing that I find fascinating about all of this is that there was this culture that was completely traditional, that everybody knew these verses, everybody knew these filthy rhymes, and it is this aggressive, filthy rhyming tradition that goes back at least to the 19th century and that was always there that everybody knew, and it just surfaced in rap. Well, let's hear a little bit of another person's version of The Dirty Dozen. Uh, This is Memphis Minnie. Come all you folks and start to walk I'm begging to start my dozen talk. What you think about ain't on my mind. That stuff you got is the sorry kind. Now you're the sorry mistrader, robber and a cheater. Left you and your dust, papa and your cousin, mama duty, Lord and Lord. So that's Memphis Minnie from 1931. And Elijah Wald, the reason why I wanted to play this track is, A, she's just an American great. But B, it kind of uh, brings us to this question that's been dogging uh, rap and hip hop, you know, through 2012. That, you know, is it inherently misogynistic? Is it, uh, you know, a male only world or or sort of puts itself out to be this male only world that isn't entirely welcoming to women? And yet here in 1931, we have Memphis Minnie taking this really dirty song and making it her own. Well, certainly dirtiness is not unique to men. Um, <laughs> dirty teenage stuff does tend to happen within within genders. I mean, girls tend to exchange dirty rhymes, and there's lots of dirty jump roping rhymes that some of them involve dozen stuff, and some of them are really filthy. Um, I mean, adolescent male culture is adolescent male culture, and a lot of the dozens was that. There were girls who got involved, but almost any time I find an interview with a girl who says she was a really great dozens player, she'll say something like, you know, I was the only girl who could play with the boys, or, you know, something like that. You know, even the boys agreed that I was good. There's always this suggestion that it was a boy thing. And, you know, there is this whole sort of jockeying for sexual power for sexual adulthood that boys go in for, and girls have their versions of it. But this does seem to have been more a boys thing. 